Abu Dhabi. And uh, apologies because to connect and still have a little bit of a challenge. So we don't have Wi-Fi at the moment. And I'm connecting with uh, my data line. And therefore, I would not be able to show the presentation and uh, um, have video on just to um, save on the data and the clarity of the connection. Just one second, we will start. Is the voice okay? Yes, Arif Bhai, voice is okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so as per drama, the topic today was um, the power of transformation. And uh, I'd um, <clears throat> worked on a very nice presentation and uh, I was ready to start this session this morning, thinking that, um, you know, the Wi-Fi will be on. And as soon as I tried, it didn't work. And uh, I thought that was a very good uh, opportunity to make us understand about this power that we're talking about, that uh, there will be time where maybe there won't be any means of communication. And uh, I wonder sometimes when Baba speaks to us, um, Baba says that things happening in a second. And, uh, you know, when somebody tells you that, okay, fine, you know, we need to do that and it has to be done in a second, the mind cannot really understand that, that what is it that happens in a second? Maybe a blink of an eye, you know, can happen. But Baba will tell you transformation in a second. <laughs> Baba will tell you that change your awareness in a second. Um, Baba will tell you that come to Paramdham in a second. And Baba will say that the soul is a rocket. So I was thinking about that aspect of transformation um, in the gross level in the world. We see that change takes a lot of time. And the reason for that is that in the gross level, everything takes a lot of time because it's the lowest level of vibration when we are talking about material change. Um, there was a beautiful picture at the beginning. It was of uh, the metamorphosis of how the caterpillar changes into a, a butterfly. And that is also a process and it takes its own time. And there is so much things that are, have to happen for that butterfly to be created. So I think in the same way, our stage, our state, our completeness in this gross level also takes time. As we go higher up in the subtle levels and the subtler level in the um, uh, subtle world and in the soul world, the concept of space and time changes because uh, in those level, things happen in a different way, not in the same way as in the physical gross level. Um, so we see that um, as we move upwards, as we move our consciousness upwards, in that space, there is no idea of time and space. The idea of time and space only starts when the soul moves from that supreme abode and then comes into a physical limitation where there is a body and there is a mind. When these limitation um, uh, starts, when the soul takes birth physically as a human, that's where the limitation comes. And we get used to this limitation so much that we lose this 
awareness of um, possibilities which are beyond the physical dimension. I'll give you an example. You must have heard people talking about near-death experiences. And in that, they say that, you know, the body would be in a state where it is completely almost unfunctional. So it will be an accident, it will be an extreme heat or a cold situation, it would be a, a complete, um, almost dysfunctional body. And then suddenly they would say that I was floating above and I could see everything, I could hear everything. And I went to this tunnel of light and there was immense peace, there was immense joy, there was, um, you know, um, uh, this feeling that they can't describe. And there was knowing as well, not only that there was this, but there was also knowing, they, knowing which is so deep that they don't have to mem have a memory. Now, this is just a simple experience of a near death, which happens coincidentally because somehow the mind gets disconnected in its usual function. And then the person is able to um, see what it is to be beyond the body. And uh, what we are trying to do is, Baba is teaching us the same thing without having to go through that near death, you know, but he calls it, you have to die a life. So he, use, he uses the same words, but um, he, um, he tells us to practice, to become bodiless in a second, let's say, for example, or to go to Paramdham in a second. And that's what the idea of transformation, if we are going to transform um, this world, if we are going to transform ourselves, it has to be different. It has to be inside out. We have to start the transformation in a space or in a dimension that is different from the outer dimension. And through that inner transformation, the outer is automatically done because the most difficult thing is to start changing the physical self. That is the last thing actually that happens, okay? So I will just pause here if there's any questions um, so far in what we have, what I have shared. If there's anybody has any question or would like to say something before we proceed. This is gonna be very experiential um, uh, session. There will be a lot more meditation. I would like to do that, but I would just want to know that whatever I have said so far, does it make sense? If there any comment, I can read the chat box. If there's anything that you would like to say, or just uh, if you can unmute, it will be much better. So as you rightly expressed, uh, Arif Bhai, for us it was, uh, while both of us were interacting before this session over WhatsApp, Baba gave us the experience of transformation within, the, within less than seconds. We were, Baba gave us a direction as to what is to be done while uh, there was a conversation whether you'll be able to log in or not. So... <laughs> the on the ground experience. Yeah, yeah, we had a resonance. Uh, yeah, yeah. We didn't mention that, but I asked Raki Ben now what to do. I am not able to connect, and she and I said the same thing. <laughs> Let's come on uh, voice only, and maybe it will work. And it's working fine, I think. <laughs> Okay, but there is something that is not happening. I need to hear from people. <laughs> Come on, let's wake up. <laughs> uh, Om Shanti, brother. Om Shanti. Just one thing, when you were speaking about transformation, and yeah. then when you gave the example of that metamorphosis, something just came in my mind. 
you know yeah. that a transformation outside it is absolutely fixed definite because it's working in that law of nature there is no need for them to change this change that change and all it's all fixed or whether you call it a science or whether you call it a law of nature the transformation there works perfectly in the process as fixed by the law of nature but me my transformation the human transformation which i'm talking about why is there uh, this distortion why suddenly human beings uh, uh, we have to be given this process transform your awareness transfer etc and all i was just thinking when that is so definite that law of nature there they don't have any you know uh, we can that maya or what everything they, everything happens perfectly well i have seen when you were talking or even that time it works but not now here we humans or we human souls there is the problem of transformation yes um it's a very good question um you know when you have let's say for example a uh, an engine which is for a jet and you try to put it in a car the car functioning cannot work so we have i think the the reason is like this that there is the physics and there is the metaphysics and in the physics everything is predictable to a certain extent there are a lot of assumption also in that um and you can see that what you said was the process the process is every every process is unique there is no repetition yeah so it is predictable to a certain extent that's the physical law that's the scientific law but beyond that science there's another law that starts applying which which is what the whole thing is all about you know to transform but not in that process where you you can change one by one just imagine you know if you have to change and you have to reverse all the impurity that has encroached our world to this point in the iron age it would be impossible okay so we need to find another way and this other way is something which is beyond silence a science which we call silence so in this world those laws don't apply anymore uh and as correctly you pointed out uh why cannot it, cannot can this not be possible because the laws the natural laws in the non physical is not the same as the natural law in the physical they are not because they are different entities the soul is a different entity belonging to a different dimension it comes into the physical physicality of life here and then you know suddenly it gets lost at the beginning it knows at the beginning it can do all those things yeah so i think that's the reason why and it's a very good thinking i think wonderful thank you uh, vinod bhai you wanted to say something i so or maybe he dropped no he's there did you wanted to add something or mention something vinod bhai shakti brother good morning oh, everyone good morning. i happened to travel a long distance yesterday and reach uh, overnight okay. so uh, but i didn't wanted to miss the class but actually <laughs> that's how i happened to join now at least with the family <laughs> Okay. I have to take some time to catch up with the conversation. No, okay. no problem. No problem. It's yeah. so good that you managed to join. Um, even I wasn't sure that I could join. So, <laughs> so it's fine. Yeah, thank you for joining. I just saw your name popping up, so I thought maybe you wanted to speak. Anyone else? Let's hear from others. Anybody else? Om Shanti. Om Shanti, uh, brother. When you are talking about transformation, basically, and you very rightly said that the moment when the soul uh, gets the body, that means uh, it is it has it is getting limitations. 
Yeah. So when so the worldly people and a, a human being, when it, it talks about transformation, it has limitation. Mm. But the Baba always uh, tells us, Bache, be soul conscious. And then Baba talks about uh, remembering me. But the Pale Atma Bhimani Hoja, be soul conscious and then remember Baba. And mm. as we remember Baba, we come in contact with Baba. And then the transformation takes place. That is mm. being a soul conscious, being soul conscious and the transformation is taking place. That means total internal transformation and external transformation both. Hmm. So transformation without limitations, that is complete transformation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, that switch of consciousness, uh, when that switch of consciousness, like uh, the awareness changes, your experience of life changes. Yes. Like for yes. example, you would be sitting in one place and then suddenly you would have a thought and you will be yes. transported there Right, and right. that takes a second, right? Yes, <laughs> if I yes. tell you, you know, just yes. uh, uh, sit down and think of your, uh, let's say, uh, office. <laughs> you know, yes. you go to the office in a second. That yes. mind doesn't need time to go there, but right. you, your physical body needs time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, that's very true. And uh, believe me, there are people who have. Uh, have a device ways whereby they can actually uh, teleport themselves. You know, I, I'm not sure, but I I heard about the golden age being a world of uh, it. When if somebody gave us a video of a golden age world at the moment, like a real video clip of the golden age, we will all uh, be surprised how things work in the golden age. It's very different from the way things work here. Um, the way I believe is that we will be using the power of the mind uh, in a very different way. For example, um, we'll be able to control, you see, like, um, you know, Baba says that you, you nature will serve you and nature will be your, uh, you know, will, uh, you know, be serving you and all that. And the way I understand it is that um, somebody was sharing their experience of uh, vision of the golden age. And they said that in the golden age, I saw myself going, approaching a, a river. And when I tried to put my foot onto that um, river, I felt the temperature was perfect. It wasn't hot. It wasn't cool. And I also could change the temperature if I wanted. So what does that mean? What it means that your mind will be so powerful that if you wanted to alter anything, you could do it just by by changing your uh, the way you receive that information. So at the moment, we are not able to do that because we are not able to stay in that stage. Whereas in the golden age, because of being automatically soul conscious, we will be able to do so many things, you know, um, that is not even uh, you can't even think about it here <laughs> so that's why this is very um, you know unique a transformation that we are going through okay okay okay, okay. okay. so let's continue yeah please you wanted to say something else yeah can we continue yeah okay so one second um, somebody mentioned okay uh, structure component interplay forces physical chemical yeah yeah this is limited one but uh, yeah to die our life okay so so let us um, go through that Bhavas Murli whereby he's got seven steps of one second okay and uh, if you remember anybody um, you know who has met Baba or who has heard Baba's drill. Baba doesn't give you time. Baba said to you that, okay, uh, when Baba does drill, he just says, okay, now be this. <laughs> and you won't believe that the whole uh, 20,000 uh, people who are sitting would just be moved to that awareness because of Baba's power. You know, you would suddenly, you know, <laughs> get pulled uh, because of that vibration that is there. 
So it is definitely possible. Uh, and uh, once this starts becoming the normal, then we won't need Wi-Fi. We wouldn't need internet. We would be able to do all these things towards, I would say towards the end, I would say very soon, we will be able to do all these things. Once, you know, uh, I think sometimes because of facilities that we have, we've become weak. You know, the moment these facilities will be removed, people will start being able to do those, what we call magical, but it's very normal, uh, soul conscious state, bodiless state, you know, seeds, seed stage and all these things, that will be just our normal. And that's the reason why towards the end of time, we will be able to function just, you know, very well without having to, you know, be shaken by the situations. So what I was going to do is I was going to take all those points and we will go into meditation and we will experiment with those thoughts that Baba has given us. Okay, Baba has given us seven uh, stages in that uh, murli. And we will explain, uh, we will uh, go through um, each one. Yeah. Okay. So I think Girija Ben has already posted them. Um, yeah. And there is more. Yeah. So there are seven actually. So let's start. And just sit um, in this space where there is a little bit of silence. And uh, if there is any thing that you are holding, just try and put it down for some time. Withdraw yourself. Take a deep breath in. And let go. Just relax your body. Relax your mind. Just become aware that I am a soul. In a second, transform your awareness from being a body, a soul in a body, to being just a point of light, just a soul. I am this being without anything to bind me. I am eternal. I am always peaceful. I'm not going to be peaceful. I am already peaceful. This is my nature. Just in a second. I'm not a, I'm not a female. I'm not a male. I'm always combined with the father. I'm a Shiv Shakti, powerful one. Wherever I go, there might be situation of nature, maybe there is situation of people, circumstances, upheaval. I'm always never alone. He's always with me. Transform your awareness in one second. Drop this gender, this limitation, the roles that you play. And I'm here at this point, God's child. He is transforming the world through me and my purpose is to transform myself and through that transformation transform the world i'm a master almighty authority nothing is impossible for the master almighty authority I have enough power within myself to create change.
And now I move to my attitude. Just in a second, let me change my attitude. How is my attitude for myself? What kind of way do I speak to myself? Is it with compassion? Is it with a lot of gratitude and understanding? How do I treat myself? What is my attitude towards other people? Can I change that attitude and see that every soul is playing their unique part very accurately? And collectively, we are playing this role together. So anything, any weakness, I have this attitude that the weakness of the other person is my own weakness because we are not separate, we are connected. My atmosphere becomes powerful with this attitude. What is my attitude towards the world? The world is going through its final stage before it is transformed. The world has been in this stage before also. And therefore, I understand and I realize that this is the time that the world is creating the shift and it is normal for it to create upheaval before that transformation. Now again, let me go inwards and see my nature and sanskar. Can I change my nature in sanskar just in a second? For having human nature, can I change that into divine nature? And can I change my sanskar to my original sanskar, which is peace, love and happiness? Just in a second, I am peace. I am love. I am bliss. Just in a second. As soon as I speak before I even speak. As soon as I think, I experience myself to be the embodiment of peace, love and happiness. And now let's move to the connections with I the soul. All my connections that I have have been created because of some karmic accounts. I go through these accounts with those who are connected to me, very patiently having the understanding of the bigger picture, that all that is happening is moving us towards truth. I'm always content, whatever happens, my contentment doesn't change. And now let's move further, transforming the most powerful treasure that we have, the treasure of our thoughts in a second from weak thoughts, wasteful thoughts, to powerful thoughts. Any thought that emerges from my mind, 
in a second. Transform those thoughts. There should be no thoughts of waste. I am a master of my thoughts. I create my thoughts. And therefore I choose to create only pure, positive, powerful, pleasant thoughts. I let go of wasteful, weak, negative and destructive thoughts in a second. And then I move on to changing the speed of my effort from ordinary to intense. I have been in my comfort zone, living an ordinary human life. And now I've moved to that ordinary humanness into deityness. And before that, into being an angel. I'm a Brahmin. And I have this effort which is effortless. Just one second. Effort doesn't mean struggle. Effort means intention of change with faith and determination. Just one time. And after going through all this, I go to a stage whereby I move beyond this whole corporeal world. And I go back home, leaving all the baggages, everything that belongs to this limited world behind. I, the traveler, I travel back home to the soul world, Paramdham, in a second. Just let go of all the heaviness and the physicality and the worries and the tension. Today, tomorrow, this person, that person. Just let go of everything and just like a point, fly like a rocket back into that physical world, non-physical world, the unlimited world of souls with my family the stars and the supreme soul, the superstar, the family of points with crowns, sparkling lights in the dimension which is beyond space, beyond time. I am completely free not only from this body, but everything connected with the body. And I'm floating in this world of light. There is no limitations in this world. Absolute power, absolute peace, absolute silence. I don't have to make effort to connect or remember. There is an automatic connection that happens in this world. Just one thought, one second, soul world. The moment I touch this space, I can go anytime I want. Just one thought, one second. That's all it takes. I come back slowly into this physical world, into the body, into this present moment. 
not losing this awareness that I have the power of the second. I can change anything. There is no need for me to struggle. I can change my thoughts. I can change my attitude. I can change my sanskar. Once I have learned this lesson of a second, I can change and transform myself and I can change and transform others and the world. Om Shanti. So, <clears throat> this is what I wanted to share today from my side. And we can have um, maybe some thoughts from your side if there's anybody who would uh, like to share their experience, maybe. So, while we begin the meditation, I guess Rachna Ben had, uh, you know, Raised her hand. Rajna, when would you want to ask anything? Om oh, Shanti, sister. Uh, well, at that time, I just wanted to share a light thought that uh, that was the time when uh, brother was talking about transformation and uh, how uh, in the Brahmin life we feel that uh, transformation is not taking place so easily. There is some kind of resistance and uh, we keep trying. So I will. I just a thought came that when when the world or the drama shifts from one age to another age, it is like uh, your mobile handset is uh, is in the restart mode. But when we shift uh, from one kalp to another kalpa, that is like a factory resetting. So although externally it seems that it's not happening as Baba wants that things should change in a second. But uh, uh, the actuality is that internally, uh, bit by bit, a lot of changes happening. As we uh, continue with the Avyak Murli series, we feel that, oh, Baba's expectations are so much and there's so, such a long way, long distance. But uh, it takes a little time for it to come into our realization how that change is actually happening in our vision and in our attitude. But now I want to just ask brother that uh, there, is, uh, there is a transformation that, has, that Baba has mentioned in today's slogan as well. Uh, if you have gone through that, could you throw some light because it just set me into thinking how to change uh, someone's waste. Uh, uh, Baba has mentioned Vyarth Bhav into Shreshth Bhav. Uh, how does that happen? I mean, yeah, yeah. So, as I said, we look at our proof of transformation from the physical, um, and as you rightly pointed, there is something which is happening in the software. It's getting reset somehow. That's very true, and um, um, so. When we have ourselves the vision that I am a soul and I'm looking at another person with that vision that this is a soul, there is this um, natural phenomena that, as I told you earlier, and I mentioned earlier, that we are not separate entities. So a soul is unique, a soul is different, but we function in a collective way. So there is a, you can imagine there is a lot of dots, but between these dots, there are lines. And through these lines, we are able to influence the collective others, which is in this case. So when I become so conscious, when I look at somebody, you might have heard sometimes uh, there are stories where somebody comes in front of you and you just look at them and you are in that stage of soul conscious and suddenly they wanted to say something and they change their mind, you know. Uh, they sometimes not even looking, they just come and they said, you know, I'd come for this. But the moment I 
came, something happened and I started feeling that, no, I shouldn't say this, you see. This is a, a small example of what is possible. But we don't want this now to be a coincidence. We want this to be the normal state. And for that, you have to stay and do a lot of practice of soul consciousness and practice of becoming bodiless. As you continue to do this, this will be natural occurrence. You know, you won't have to, you, you will know and you will have faith that, yes, it is happening. So whenever Baba says those things, it's just a practice of these two things. I hope that is clear. Yes, brother. Thank you. Brother, can I just add to what you have said? You know, sure, sure. You know as you were uh, taking us on this meditation, I was going through every, uh, the, you said the seven, everything. But one thing which was a really uh, uh, a process which I found uh, was the reason for everything was attitude. See, everything else, the form, going to Parandam, um, and uh, changing the people and all that, I felt it was on attitude. So that is, why, that is why if even in that same Murli, Baba gave one cardinal rule, self-transformation. So unless I change my way of thinking, my perspective, if I change, so uh, my goal should never, never be that I should change the people who are coming in my connection. I should change their nature. The it will never be possible unless the second aspect, awareness, okay. Awareness is just, you know, you're changing your costume to make it look more spiritual. But I feel that attitude, that vritti, that uh, thought process about that person, First of all, we think wrong about that person because we listened to something wrong. So our thinking about that other process is our, our projected thinking. So there is nothing wrong with that person. It's my projected thinking. So if, and that we, if I have that we concept, not I concept, we, that it's not only I alone have to change, the whole transformation has to take place, then only world transformation is possible. I think uh, that attitude change, looking at that person is what was difficult, I found, and that is where I fidgeted a lot. This human soul in all these seven, see how many places we have fidgeted that Baba has to come and tell us, give, give us, do this, do that. Seven kinds of nuts and bolts we have removed. But out of that, I found that, that attitude is really mm, given a thing. Everything else will fall in its place. I don't know. I just got that feeling when you were taking us on the meditation. Thank you for that sharing. Um, I appreciate it. Um, anything else? Anyone else would like to share their experience? Uh, Om Shanti, brother. Om Shanti. Uh, thank you, brother. That was a beautiful experience. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, beside that, I uh, I used to think uh, this, you know, uh, how to uh, develop, uh, uh, you know, love, intense love uh, for God. Because um, I used to think like, you know, this is one of the best way to become powerful. And at the same time, uh, easiest way uh, to transform ourselves. And uh, as you know, this is uh, July month uh, and uh, uh, our, this Didi um, right? The Manmohini Ji is month and Didi, I think is very well known for uh, her intense love for God. And yeah. she was practically image of uh, that. And then the transformation, I feel transformation becomes easy, uh, you know, with love 
of God that we have and also the love we have for God. Right, mm. uh, and uh, as we have seen with dadis or didis, you know, their presence really make or, yeah, make a uh, uh, other soul like uh, who are who is not in gyan also, right? Give them a kind of experience or uh, experience of God, right? So that's where see some people who are not spiritually powerful, and then we try to give this knowledge to someone who's mm. intellectual. They start mm. questioning us, right? They give a lot of questions, but when they go to a powerful soul like that, these are these, and then mm. they kind of uh, they will not have many questions there because they uh, that these are these. They give them this powerful the kind the kind of powerful vibration that comes out of them, right? Actually, um, sort out all their questions, so they uh, eventually go to silence, right? So. uh i used to think like you know sometimes am i uh, being intellectual and logical and then connecting god mm. uh you know that is also uh, good uh, in a way but uh, i feel um you know we can develop that intense love that they had uh none uh, but one and that's going to transform us uh, mm. in the fastest way So I used to mm. think, and let's see, like how we can develop that the, that state. Mm. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, very true. The logical mind is limited, and uh, we need the heart. We need that. Ah, uh, uh, love is the catalyst that happens and creates that speed. You know, just like any catalyst. it is not part of that process it's not passed of that reaction but it makes that reaction happen very quickly you know so yes of course um, that is so true another point that i remember also is that uh, when the sisters question we don't change other people actually so we're not like oh no i'm going to change this person's attitude i'm going to change this person's thing no you don't do it like that this happens automatically so whenever i create the change obviously starting from awareness without the awareness being different you cannot change anything else first the awareness who am i who do i belong to these are the foundation and they are of course what the brother said um it makes it very easy to do this with the energy of love because love makes difficult things easy but we also need the balance of love everything happens within the required love but yeah it's very true thank you for that om shanti om um, shanti a wonderful yeah. session going on uh, with lot of experience uh, thank you for that and uh, yeah. just one reflection i would like to share is the transformation the word itself uh, signifies that we are going beyond the form which right now we are experiencing and going to a different form altogether and mm. uh, it's it can be compared with as baba has himself uh, compared with uh, uh, the transformation of a caterpillar into a butterfly mm. uh, and uh, now butterfly is uh, living a new life and uh, you know new uh, unlimited boundaries it is now uh, experiencing and uh, i mean unlimited life and new attainments so mm-hmm. this transformation is something like caterpillar to uh, butterfly where we are uh, changing we are uh, going beyond the uh, present mm-hmm. awareness body consciousness mm-hmm. soul consciousness and the yeah. seven steps which you brought out are actually uh, very powerful tools uh only thing uh, that first step is very important the awareness the smriti mm. that uh, whose uh, child am i mm. uh, and who am i that is very very important and yeah. uh, once that is set right then automatically yeah. smriti se vritti vritti se drishti drishti se yeah. sambandh sanskar or sanskar se sankalp or sans- sankalp se purusharth yeah. and new life uh the moment new life comes i mean just imagine garb 
डेल से गर्भ महल द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम गर्भ महल जस्ट सी द बिग ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन सो वेयर एम आई राइट नाउ एंड दैट awareness itself transcends you to the new life and new experience once it is a new life you get the varsha the mm-hmm. the varsha the inheritance and the inheritance is a new experience new connections new habits new kind of magic which happens yeah om shanti om shanti yes very beautiful yeah and uh, totally agree with you the first thing that has to change is my awareness and that's the reason why baba is there that's the reason why we are doing everything uh, is to shift and go back and the funny part is that we are already that this moment we are not going to become that after 10 years of practice very true, very true and that's why baba says the first birth is the confluence age the first yeah. birth of sakyuga is <laughs> <laughs> baba yeah. is already uh, giving us a very strong uh, he is trying to make us strongly believe that this is the first birth and yeah. how many of us they actually believe that this is the first birth and most of us <laughs> we think you know we are now we are waiting for that first birth and it will happen yeah. and i mean it's 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 a constant state which yeah. both things are there we yeah. tell you as well as satyug world both are there yes so, one awareness we are every cell of ours every thought of ours every second of our uh, this life is full of which energy which that, which right. level of energy which uh, dimension which elevation that is what i don't think i don't think it's much of a problem to be born to be born is an a second the problem is reborn. we don't want to die <laughs> that's the problem yeah we don't know how to die because we sometimes maya pulls us back to the same garbh mahal yeah yeah we that's don't want to die that's yeah. the problem the moment you are ready to die birth is very easy <laughs> yeah so that's why i said aap muye mar gayi duniya that's exactly the case. exactly we don't have to transform all everybody around us the five elements no yeah. you just have yeah. to focus on my inner space if my inner space is set right with the right yeah. kind of energy Yeah. and automatically it is i am in a open system i am not in a isolated system it's That's a open right. system yeah the That's entire right. cosmos is affected because of my one thought the space yeah. is affected very okay. nice okay are pretty wanted to say something i think oh, you were yes. on Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm sure. Yeah. Om Shanti, brother. Firstly, thank you for the very nice meditation. It was very nice and peaceful and calm. And I shared in the chat box that I do this kind, similar kind of a thing almost every day. And I just wanted to share my journey that actually there reaches a point where you go above the theoretical aspects. you know the seven stage five stage i mean these are okay to read from your conscious mind to understand and it has its own value of course but after a point when you are connecting deeply you go beyond that kind of theory knowledge you know you actually just experience and what you experience that love that feeling of connection that divinity which you can not only experience in yourself but you can share with all those dots or souls around you is so magical and so blissful you go beyond those desires of trying to change people or trying to change the situation you mm-hmm. actually learn how to accept whatever is being given to you as a greatest gift of the almighty mm-hmm. because w- even if some things are little bit here and there you mm. know there's like you yourself said in the meditation those karmic situations of the past mm. and your own spiritual journey in that you see everything as if you're seeing your whole story past mm. present future and you're also seeing that divine connection and the almighty himself is blessing all those souls 
So you don't have, you have to even make that special effort. As long as you're connected to that source, that source is blessing all the connection along with you. So that mm. lines which you mentioned between the dots are connecting automatically. Mm. So I just feel, yeah, I could relate to what you're saying fully, you know, like, because I know that, mm. in the, but I feel after a point, this discussion to me, i sorry, I don't want to be taken in a wrong sense, because I know it's very important to read the seven stage, the five stage. But to me, it becomes like, if you're in true meditation, you go beyond all this discussion. You don't need yeah. the theory. You just feel. You just experience. And mm -hmm. you just know. I don't know how yeah. to explain this in any other way. Om Shanti. Yeah. I will not take time because we are up in time. But I will just explain you in this way. That uh, did you learn how to read when you were small? Right? You must have gone to school and they would have taught you how to read. And when you started learning, you started um to know that A is for apple and B is for bowl and so on and so forth. And uh, there was one day that you were able to read. And when you, when you try to remember when was that day, you won't be able to remember because this was happening automatically. From A to apple to being able to understand what is A and read A without that relationship with the apple, yeah? So this is the same process that is happening here. You have the process of studying, and then once you study, then you don't need to study. <laughs> then you are using that, and that's what your stage is at the moment. You are uh, going through that, um, through that part of A for apple, and now you're leaving that experience. But before, being able to read, you have to learn A is for it. So that's how I would put it. Yes. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Baba. Thank you, um, Drama, that we managed to do the session today. <laughs> thank you, Rakhi. Yeah, very well said, brother. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Drama. Thank <laughs> you. And thank you, Divine Family. And thank you, the family. Yeah. Let's keep transforming every second as an experience that we took today morning. Yeah. And have a wonderful day. We meet yeah. tomorrow. So just, uh, yeah, as today's Murli, those who have listened or those who are going to listen, just use every moment, every thought as a treasure and make sure no thoughts goes to waste. And transformation is just there it's already happened <laughs> okay om shanti and have a lovely shanti. sunday shanti.